delightful. That was delightful. Yeah, you know. <laughs> you should have been a, uh, a DJ there, Alex. <laughs> <laughs> uh, wedding singer, if you didn't know that, Dan. Ah, uh, really? I've done do some DJing in the past. I mean, I'm no uh, emoji from the Vivi fan, but, you know, I, I try to keep it real. <laughs> That's it. Alex on the ones and twos. <laughs> All right, you want to kick us off there, Reese? Absolutely, absolutely. Big welcome, everybody. Uh, I think most people have probably tuned in, but just in case you guys want to share this around, please feel free to uh, to share that Twitter link just so that people can join us. Um, but without further ado, I think we'll just dive right in if everybody's ready. Uh, <clears throat> what a week, gentlemen! What a week! Disney, Pixar, Wait, what Star happened? Wars. You know, just a little announcement. Maybe the biggest one to ever happen, but uh, let's celebrate. How are you, Dan? What a deal. Do you want to bring us, uh, give us some insight there? Uh, yes, amazing week, but I think I'll hand it over to the to the man himself who um, more than likely signed the dotted line. Uh, ah, Mr. Yu. Mr. Yu. Welcome, <laughs> oh, Hi, guys. Oh, no, there he is. There he is. Hey. Hey, guys. Perfect. I hope nice. everyone's well and happy Halloween in, I think, a day or two. Uh, yeah, what a remarkable yeah. week. I mean, it's the company just uh, moving forward. Um, I mean, this has definitely, the announcement with Disney partnership has been a long, you know, a long time in the making. Uh, and we're very pleased that uh, not just one or two of the franchise have joined, but almost all of them have joined uh, on board. Uh, you, know, it, you know, as our audience wants, they want everything, you know, our audience are hungry <laughs> for everything. So, you know, we can't believe everything we do in the company, we think about five to six steps ahead of things. And, you know, the we, we look for a granular plan and the rollout. And, you know, Dan's going to give you a lot, a lot more update, you know, what we'd be expecting um, with our drops coming up. And, you know, um, and we, we've got more announcement coming up. <laughs> we do, we do. <laughs> well, Dan it's can get those announcements. Uh, that's it. There's always, always, there's always another announcement. <laughs> always around the corner. But um, look, maybe before we get to those kind of updates and and things, you know, I think a lot of people really like to get your personal insight, David, into these things. I mean, what does oh, everybody knows Disney is huge, but I mean, personally, what what does this kind of license mean to you? Have you, you know, have do you sell Disney products in your stores? Has this been a long time coming? Yeah, I mean, D- Disney definitely is. Uh, uh, how, how should we say it? I mean, that, that it's a huge corporation. I mean, they uh, the the IP they own across all the studios and the franchise they own. I mean, it's it's covering up to sixty, seventy percent of all the brands that you know of and you have grew up with. You know, from Marvel to Pixar to Star Wars and you know, and there's other channels that they have bought, other studios, smaller one, um, and we'll, we'll be rolling them out slowly over the next year. And, you know, my first involvement with Disney will have to be coming back in, in about the 97, 98 year when I was in the telephone car business with my friend. And, you know, there's a range of uh, phone cars back then, back in the day, people were collecting stamps and phone car. Uh you know, my involvement gone all the way back. But obviously the company as a Disney overall has changed huge, you know, in every mm-hmm. direction, the innovation, the creativity. I mean, they they are just moving in rapid speed. I mean, Disney Plus is another huge celebration for them. And that's part of this, what we're doing uh, with this major job we got. I mean, uh, I, I, I believe... Uh, we are uh, every NFT come to get a bundle with a subscription for free. Um, mm-hmm. Some of them for three months, and you get up to twelve months on. I think I believe that the ultra rare that will be coming out. So yeah, I mean this is giving our fans really utility value. And company like Disney, they they always extremely innovative, find ways to partner with you, you know company and. Uh, this is a, just a great another great example of how utility value in NFT can be, and we're just starting to explore uh, with Vivi. 
Mm. And then we're going to have much more different way of utility, hopefully, built into our NFT in the future. Yep. Yep. I think, uh, yeah, as you say, more recently, people are definitely starting to see that utility value creep into our collectibles. So that's pretty big. And and as you said, I mean, Disney as a company, I know that they were not necessarily on the brink a few years ago, but but licensing has helped them to to really reestablish themselves as such a, uh, a global brand as well. And and licensing powerhouse so it's um yeah it's like I, yeah yep. yeah I, I really believe that most of these studios are now uh, are, are getting really active and and one mm-hmm. one of the major thing is to ensure that they always staying relevant with their audience and you know how they can bring that character that you once know of directly in front of you and how to be interactive in front of their audience and, yeah. you know, Phoebe demonstrate in multiple uh, levels how, you know, a collectible can be, you know, living around you. And one, one of the major things that I always talk about is when you go to Comic-Con, when you go to these con events, you, you take hundreds of photos. I mean, in Disneyland, you'll take hundreds of photos mm-hmm. of all the attractions. You'll share them. But, you know, it comes to Monday, you're not in that destination. You're not in the cons. What do you do? You have Phoebe. You can bring out your favorite characters <laughs> standing next to you, take post next to the AR, and you know, being creative and post it and share it with people. The the yeah. whole idea of what we want to do, going back, keep going back to our philosophy is fandom, and you know, everything we build is all around fun and you know, and magic. Uh, I mean, it has been a magical moment uh, to announce the partnership, and. You know, for for us, it's also to explore what our fans love and want to see. Um, and I, I know a lot of our fans out there are always asking, when is this coming? When is that? And just keep are going they? back. Yeah, I mean, I, I think, and, and I, I'm really scared to look at my private message in my Instagram. It's like built up to must be like 6,000 plus. I know a lot of them are now repeating to go, you promise you'll answer me. And I will once I get a moment. Um we we as a company needs to really look at you know how viable when we roll these things out you know we don't want to really just release a disney character when we at the very early start and you know facing a lot of issues and as we fine tune our app and our audience are growing uh we will time it right and we'll release things at to the point and as i keep going back every aspect of our business, we always think three to four steps ahead. When we take a stand, when we do something, we think about why we're doing it and how we're going to uh, get there and how, how we achieve things. So, you know, myself and Dan and our executives, you know, we have uh, advices, you know, help us uh, to achieve that uh, goal. And, and at the end of the day is our fan, you know, and our, we we, mm-hmm. we we like to think every Phoebe supporter out there is celebrating together with us in, in this remarkable um, in announcement. And it certainly has been extremely hard for me to keep it under the lip. <laughs> I'm, under, I'm under huge NDA from every franchise from left, right and centre. Uh, there, and before the announcement, there was only less than a handful of people in our organization, including our legals, that knows about the deal, that we are facing through this agreement and things. So it's been very, very hard. I mean, I'm always in joy um, when, when something remarkable that we can deliver to our fans and come true. Um, and, you know, please uh, keep supporting us and celebrate with us. I mean, we've got some great lineup. I mean, just, just for this weekend alone coming up, you know the the Spidey Man and the Zombie mm-hmm. Kid and the very those are amazing are awesome. characters. I mean, I I was so surprised that we even going to get those, you know, over the line. I mean, you know, the, these are Marvel Studio um, digital collectibles. They they are amazing. They you know it's going out of the box. You're not just buying a Captain America. You're getting a zombie Captain America. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. The, the creative teams behind it uh, working with us, uh, it just done a remarkable job. And you will continue to see improvements uh, in, our, in our collectible and will continue to deliver. Yeah, absolutely. That's, um, 
a great rundown for people. Now, just a couple of points and questions that I know I'm going to get from people. So you said this deal with Disney has been in the works for quite a while. So uh, I guess first yeah. and foremost, people will want to know how long have we got the partnership for? I mean, you know, multi-year, yeah, I'm assuming. So, um, I, I, I've been working on this part, uh, knocking on doors since I believe then. When, when did I start visiting up in uh, the Asia region for, with, with this thing? I think it was about two, two eighteen, mid two eighteen, and you know we we got introduced to uh, the Greater Asia uh, team executive and their vice presidents, and slowly, you know, we're moving into the US, and obviously. Um, like everyone knows, the blockchain word, you know, association with crypto, um, you know, give a lot of these executive, uh, you know, uh, they, they stand off, they, they feel maybe they're not there, they're legal, don't quite understand it. And I, I remember going into a number of these meetings in Los Angeles, uh, even in greater China area, you know, it was a very, very uh, hard to explain why what people want to enter into purchasing these digital collectibles or NFT as we know of. And, and, and myself and Dan is one of those, uh, we, we have that personality and persona is that we'll just keep pursuing it until we get it. And yeah. I think really that's what really got us over the line and demonstrating that we can execute with clever marketing and how to utilize these great characters that you know of um, mm-hmm. to to explore new avenues, and at the at the end of the day, um, uh, you know, it's not even really about the uh, economic behind it. It's just this is a brand new era that all these brands uh, are moving into, and certainly now with Disney on board, as as we have announced, and with all these other larger IP, you know, for me when I look at the NFT industry and uh, this whole entire digital uh, asset industry is just going to continue to grow. It's going to foster. Uh, I, I mean, everyone is so deeply invested in it. I mean, the amount of phone call, I just want everyone to know, <laughs> the amount of phone call I got in email of other major tier one brand license want to partner with us after that announcement has just shown us, you know, that this industry is it's really getting great cemented pillars and these pillars is just going to be you know hardened and and one of the philosophy when i built businesses and in the past and how i think is you know like like what we are building is we're really building our empire state building type of structure we're going to have major pillars down there and major brains supporting us from the foundation all the way up to ensure that if anything comes major strike off, we, we're not going to be vulnerable. And th- this partnership is a multi-year deal. Um, and, y- you know, the partnership is just going to foster to be something even more stronger. And, yeah. you know, D- Dan's talked a, a lot uh, a, to- a lot of times about the the topic that we keep bringing up is the metaphors. And, and I think out there, and you know the last couple of days with the media with um, you know with uh, this things. other yeah that's that's the one mm. I, I i actually think they're called meta now they're not yes. facebook i don't know and, yeah. and and i was joking with dan the other day you know maybe we need to uh change our name to uh why well, originally <laughs> thought uh, nana would be a great name like nana 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 <laughs> <Batman. laughs> and then and then i thought maybe we should change the data and they are called Meta. We are data. Meta data. Meta data? <laughs> <laughs> no, just for a bit of laugh. Um, you, you, you know, we de- definitely, a lot of these companies see value in, in the Meta first. And it, it just shown that it, it is one direction that we're going to be moving into. And our audience, uh, you know, the way we react, the way we uh, engage in the future in digital world it, it's gonna it's gonna be very very different um yes. and i think there's something that daniel dan um, is extremely passionate about and you know we'll share more yeah but you know that's me uh enough talking for me i want to hear what <laughs> dan have to say i'm here to learn <laughs> absolutely 
Uh, I think you pretty much covered it all, Dave. Very eloquently. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, no, but, but I, I, I do have to say uh, it's been a remarkable journey uh, w- working with them alongside traveling uh, to see Disney. It, it was one of those things we we thought, oh man, you know, we are pre-revenue, we are a startup, we, we pre, pre-live pre app. It, it would be extremely difficult for these companies to really understand what we're doing. And you know, with the persistence of dance, uh, and it, it, it's just a teamwork. You know, there's days mm-hmm. that we honestly just think, you know, how are we gonna try to convince these company that they should join in? This is gonna be a groundbreaking and changing. And Dan is always very stand very, you know, solid to go. Mm. Well, this is what's gonna happen. You guys will wait and see. If you're not, if you're gonna miss out, you know, this is time for you guys to be in uh, sure. so that negotiation went for multiple years you know it, it wasn't because NFT was hot and they pick up a phone call and down in New Zealand and call hey you know you know, we saw this white glove thing we <laughs> checked it out and we thought hey you know, that, you know the you're the best partner this is the guy you're on point <laughs> you know and the hair is just on point and we have to do this <laughs> Yeah, I'm sure that's how it played out. <laughs> how much? Uh, yeah. How much? How much do you think the the Marvel license and and the success of that so far fed into the Disney deal, or was it you know was that I, kind of a test case, or do you think it was already done? I, you know, these organisation they are owned by one uh, one holding entity, but certainly they do run separate. Um, I believe it's pretty unheard of to have. Uh, you you know to have this many IP all under one roof. I mean, we we done mm-hmm. a remarkable job to earn these trusts. Uh, I mean, I, I think the announcement mentioned that there's Star Wars coming, there's Pixar, there's the Disney uh, Princess line, and obviously we all know we have the Marvel line, and we are going to be adding more into it, and there'll be some sort of surprises coming out. Um, so. Yeah, as as a company, I'm definitely very satisfied with with the partnership or the deal that we have structured to roll this program out. Um, yeah, but overall, I think Marvel definitely had played some part in into it, um, and I, I I do believe that it's very important that these characters have relevance. So. Even if you're doing amazing revenue in Marvel, it doesn't mean you're just going to get everything else. I mean, because they might not be relevant categories, if you know mm-hmm. what I mean. So um, and, and this is quite often in the licensing world. You might be great at making T-shirts and hat, but that character might not be fit for T-shirts and hat or sell as well. So it doesn't mean... You know, Marvel NFT does well that everything else needs to be bundled in because mm-hmm. it, it, it might not be relevant to our audience. But, you know, the, the case that we have done and we have built uh, and demonstrated is that, you know, we want to bring these magic together and these characters all under one roof. Um, and that was something that we were very strong stunned on. You know, we will want all these to be bundled up. And yeah, yeah and, and give it to your audience, the audience that will love these. For sure, for sure. From a um, from a purely collectible point of view, and, and in your experience, is is one of these major IPs more collectible? You know, are they more sought after? Is it Star Wars or Pixar or uh, yeah? yeah. I yeah. mean, and and you you know, th- this is a great question. I mean, you know, twenty years ago, that uh, I started my you know, my 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 hobby in stamp collecting and there's something I'm passionate and back back in the day when you click stamp you, you, you have butterflies you have trains you have sceneries and mm-hmm. then they start bringing out these beautiful you know uh, licensed stamps you know you start to see you know Disney stamps or Star Wars stamp and you know I just love them it, you know it just and, and this is a way for collectors to to interact but you know go, go, going back to you know your question are they more desirable to click or this different way and I, I think i mentioned it many times we want you know when 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 i tell dan i say dan you're gonna love this 
But you, you know, I don't know what Dan laughs or not. It's it's how the collector laugh, learn to laugh to collect these things. What what our collectors probably don't don't even know they love collecting NFT because they are they love collecting specific characters that we bring out. They might cl- love collecting number eight, so number eighty eight, or num- a special edition number of mm. the collectible that we bring. And there's people out there collecting everything that's ultra rare or anything that's uh, machinery yeah. like cars or planes. But with, with, with Phoebe and, and with relation to the Disney deal is that we, we really believe that, you know, Pixar has their own audience. The Disney princess has been out. I mean, the, the Mickey Mouse series is obviously one of the longer running mm-hmm. cartoon out there. You know, from black and white days now to fully animated, you know, there's a huge fans out there. I mean, I, I don't know what the number is, but around the world, the Disneyland, Disney World, you know, the attraction is still one of the top, you know, uh, amusement park people visit. Yeah. And you can imagine one day these collectibles will be living around those parks as well. They're, you know, things that in, mm. you know, in many years, how how the digital world will transform you know, the physical park experience into digital, that it's another layer of things that uh, I really think, you know, it's going to add a lot of more ut- utility value to it. Yeah. Um, but it, what, what I say, one brand is stronger than the other. I, I totally believe that, you know, if, if you love Star Wars, you, you're just going to love what's going to be coming out. If you love Pixar, regardless mm-hmm. of what character it is, you're just going to love it because you love the storytelling of that company, what they bring out. Yeah. Um, so I think they all, everything we do will be very sought after one way or another. Yeah, couldn't agree more. Couldn't agree more. And as you said, they all bring their own audience and fans. And I mean, if we've learned anything, most of our fans are happy buying Murmur Corners. So I'm sure they will be happy buying Disney characters. <laughs> yeah. I think <laughs> yeah. Alex and I are definitely in the Star Wars camp. For me, that that is one hundred percent the brand I'm most excited about. I mean, can you imagine Absolutely. having a, having an AT AT walk across your room and you know fire its blasters and interact with its speeder? I mean, yeah, it's going to be so cool. It is. I mean, it is. We, yeah, I, I, I'll tell you a story about me and Dan. Um, we, you know, just to get to understand the brand a lot more, we we managed to visit the Star Wars um, uh, Disneyland, the, the attraction. Um, and, you know, the night before, you know, we were doing study, we watch all the YouTube, what not to do, what to do. And, you know, we decided to go in the park and, and clever enough, you know, we thought maybe we do the anti-clockwise, you know, go the opposite direction of what everyone does. And obviously we arrived at the new Star Wars camp and, you know, what not to do, number one is don't buy a Star Wars lightsaber or be part of the workshop. That's what we say because we we talked about it. You know, we, it, you know, once you go in the workshop, you're going to be carrying that lightsaber the whole day. We're going to have problem carrying on the plane, everything. And what do you know? <laughs> we are right at it. And the, the, the these car- you know, these guys dress up in role playing, and they come up and they go, "Hey, you know, we have two spots left for this lightsaber making class." You know, and surely. We put our name on it for the whole day. We we was, within ten minutes, <laughs> within ten minutes, we had already broken our our rule. But it was, it, it's pretty cool. I look I look at my, the lightsaber every day and play with it at least once a month. So I'm I'm still happy with the purchase. Still satisfied. Uh, we, you know, it, and and that's what Fendon does. You you set all these rules. You say no, I'm not going to buy. This is crazy. You know, oh, there's all hype. And we bought into our own hype, you know, we, we, we get in and because we are fan and we love that experience, that storytelling and making your own lightsaber. And I, I do believe I, we've been told that, you know, there's a new lightsaber coming out uh, mm-hmm. as well, or maybe it's already out, a quite special one. So, you know, if you guys get to visit uh, Decon, you're next to Anaheim, you know, you get a chance to pop over to Disneyland, you know, it's definitely worth looking at it. Uh, yeah. It's it's totally amazing. Yeah, that uh, sounds good to me. I think there's a staff trip planned after Decon, just so you guys <laughs> are aware. 
Oh, great. <laughs> you, you, must, you must definitely get me one of those. Things. I'll tell you. I'll talk to you afterwards. Just, I'll add it from. to your list, David. That's it. Yes. <laughs> uh, uh, apparently, there's these new lightsaber that come out, but, but it's actually like a real light goes up. Um, yeah. So there's I no, there's no plastic blade anymore, apparently. It's, um, All right. it's some kind of new fancy technology. Laser. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> won't, won't, uh, won't cut through anything, but <laughs> oh, well, that's uh, that's pretty exciting. So, is that confirmation, guys? Are we are we seeing lightsabers on VB at some point? <laughs> is that <laughs> <laughs> you know we you know we can't confirm anything. I know right? we can't confirm anything. We'll put that we'll put that on the back burner. We, Just leave it we can hope. We can always <laughs> yeah. hope. That's it. That's it. All right. Well, look, we might just reset the room and then maybe dive into some of these uh, these topics as well. We'll start with um, Disney and Disney Plus. But before we get there, just a big welcome to everybody and thank you for joining us uh, on what is a momentous occasion to celebrate um, Disney, Disney Plus Day and the Master Collector Program or the initial rollout of the Master Collector Program. Um, as always, please uh, share these links if anybody needs to find our resources. We do have a VV Discord server. We do have a Comey Telegram channels. Uh, and obviously, you can find us through our socials as well. So if anybody needs those links, I'm sure the family will be happy to share them. But without further ado, um, we will cover all of the main topics probably in the next half an hour, all the sticky points we've found over the last week. Uh, and then we'll open up to two questions from the floor and some of the pre-submitted ones. Um, but to get started, how about we dive into Disney Plus Day, Dan or Alex, or does someone want to... Maybe speak to what we can expect, roll, go through that rollout plan? Yeah, absolutely. Um, uh, I can't go into too much more detail beyond the press release, but um, as, as most people know who have read the article uh, or, or seen the press release, um, the first drops that we'll be doing is in celebration of Disney Plus Day. Uh, I believe it's their first anniversary on November 12th. Mm -hmm. uh, and so the exciting thing is, is that um, during that week, um, we will be doing a, a series of drops of golden statues that uh, are a sort of icons from some of the shows that you um, have probably watched on Disney+. Plus. Uh, and uh, yeah, um, I can tell you that the, the, the golden statues are just absolutely beautiful. And the, you know, the team over at Disney have been, you know, really such a pleasure to work with. They, 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 I, think, I think the reason we kind of gelled with them early on is that, uh, you know, both companies have a very similar ethos, and you know that. And e even though you know we're a technology company and they're they're a licensing or IP company, uh, at, you know, at our heart we are all about the the fan and the collector experience, and that and, and I think that's what resonated with them um, very early on. And then the other exciting thing, which yeah, which Dave already touched on, is that. For each each person who manages manages to secure uh, one of the collectibles from the from the Disney Play uh, Disney Plus Day drops, uh, will get a, a subscription to uh, Disney Plus. You know, which, which again, is just I think it's so encouraging that we're starting to see uh, you know these big licensors that have come on board with Vivi to realize that there's an extended layer to what we're doing, which is the utility. And I'm really excited going into 2022 that we can anticipate to see a lot more of that utility coming into the into the NFT space. So the fact that, you know, a big IP company like Disney uh, and along with um, uh, MGM and James Bond uh, are kind of leading the, the cause. It's just, yeah, it's so cool. And I'm, I'm just super excited to see, you know, what we're going to be seeing uh, in the future. Um, so... Yeah. Yeah, without I, I don't think I can say too much more on the actual drops, other than stay tuned because we'll be starting to release more information. Uh, I believe it's from next week, and yeah, really excited to, uh, to present what what's going to be coming out. Yes, I am very excited to see it, along with uh, I think everybody else waiting in the wings. But um, super exciting there, and, and as you said, you know that utility. It's it's nice to see real world utility from these these NFTs. You know, a lot of the space is full of digital utility or you know utility within gaming spheres. But um, to see that that marriage between the physical and digital is is a really encouraging sign, as you said. Uh, okay, well that's exciting. We'll stay tuned for more info from Alex on that front. Um, obviously, the next topic on everybody's lips is the immutable migration. 
So I know we had some technical development difficulties there that we have overcome. Is that correct? Yes, that is correct. Um, and actually, just before I get into it, um, I just wanted to give a big shout out to uh, some of the people in the community. Um, obviously, non-fungible, wonderful. I mean, I, I think probably a oh. hundred views uh, on that YouTube video was me from just playing it over and over. <laughs> so honestly, well done. And how did, I have no idea how you bang the stuff out so fast. Oh, I mean, it took me four weeks to write it. So, um, yeah. and, uh, and what, who else did I see? I think it was BB Giffy did an awesome, uh, another one of his awesome videos. And also just a shout out to everyone in the community who I've spoken to about, you know, master collect the program, um, even the OB utility, you know, I find it really valuable just getting feedback uh, directly from people in the community about, um, you know, things they like or things they don't like and, you know, where we, where we should be heading. So, um, just a big thank you to everyone for that. Uh, now, in terms of immutable, um, as we, as Reese just mentioned, and as we covered off in the last AMA, there was some um, optimization uh, issues that we needed to resolve, and the uh, happy to say that that has all been um, fixed up now, and we've run run through all of our uh, unit tests internally, and everything is looking very good. So we're hoping that the minting, which is the the next stage, is going to happen very soon, <clears throat> and all going well, that will start kicking off uh, around the the end of next week. I think we just need to move the uh, all of the tests. Uh, uh, the test work into the production environment, and once that's done, yeah, we can we can press on. So, a um, bit of a shame on the day, but hey, man, you know, like I always say, this is the world of development, and you know, also, you know, we're we're still kind of a startup, and Immutable still kind of a startup. So, uh, obviously, we're sort of bouncing around with with resources and that kind of thing as well. For sure, for sure, and anyone who's been following Immutable will see that they've rolled out some pretty mega announcements lately partnership with tiktok and, and things like that so you know as startups obviously that that resource base gets uh, spread pretty thin sometimes but um, yeah and just also just so, just so people know that the integration that we do with immutable is very different to you know what their their standard integration is because we we have a very different business model in the sense that we have one foot in crypto one foot out of crypto we obviously have like and saw agreements that we need to comply with um uh, and so that that's also one of the reasons that the development has uh, um, taken an extend, extended amount of time. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Good to know. And I mean, I might just take this opportunity to remind people that the minting phase or, or what is known as phase two, there is no uh, user interaction there. You guys don't need to do anything during phase two. Uh, and if I'm correct, we will take the market offline for a few hours when that um, migration is taking place. Hopefully, keep that window as short as possible, but uh, but there will be a window there where the market is offline. So, just yeah, so the, being aware of. The, the developers have had, had said two or three hours. So, uh, I think as I mentioned last time, I've, I've noted that down as four or five hours. So, we'll, mm -hmm. we'll see how it goes, but we'll obviously try to minimize uh, that that impact, and um, we'll do it at a time where there's the least amount of activity on VV, which, to be honest, is a very small window. Yeah, these days. Yeah, <laughs> I was going to say, I don't know that. We picked that, but as always, guys, we will release plenty of uh, updates, announcements, information, just to um, to let everybody know that is taking place and, and not to panic. So good to hear that is around the corner. Another thing that I think is around the corner is the Gem to Fiat cash out and MTL. How are we going? Uh, should I make a joke right now about the fact it's coming? <laughs> out? Or is that is that too sensitive? <laughs> it's, it's too, it's too it's been too big a week. <laughs> uh, no, um, uh, Gentithia is going very well. So we anticipate that we will be opening up to the first users by the end of next week. We've got everything, everything is basically built and developed on our side. Same deal. It's been through the testing. Um, there was the integration with the banking partner uh, did end up taking uh, longer than we had anticipated. A lot of that is due to, you know, the banking uh, partner we're using down here in New Zealand. Uh, if, if people don't know, New Zealand's currently on uh, countrywide lockdown due to COVID. Um, so yeah. there has been a fair few delays with their <clears throat> IT teams. But we managed to get through it like we always do. So, yeah, very excited to get that opened up um, to uh, the early few users from end of next week. And then as we've explained, as we start to roll through those initial few users and everything starts going well, then we'll start opening it up to more and more users um, and then ultimately eventually up to everyone. Yeah, yeah. I think that's what uh, most people 
we'll wait for. And do you want to just, um, I think we've mentioned this before, but there obviously will be a KYC process to run through. Is there anything that needs to be mentioned on, on that front just yet? Uh, absolutely. I mean, <clears throat> you know, when we're dealing with any kind of funds or anything to do with financial uh, uh, instruments, the world is a very different place now from where it was five years ago, where, you know, nowadays, even to walk into a bank, it seems like <clears throat> I need to present my password and go through AML and KYC. Mm -hmm. So because we are dealing with people withdrawing funds down to their bank account, uh, the first first step of, of using the payout system is that you will need to go through a KYC process. And then once that has been approved, which, which will be a maximum of, of 24 hours, uh, assuming you get, you get approved, um, and then from that point, you'll be able to start um, doing the gym to fiat. Yep, and I guess we should note that the KYC is done by that third party or, you know, by, by the partner. They're not by us. So any issues with KYC, don't send us tickets, I'm assuming. Uh, yeah, we will, ha we will have uh, a lot of information on the web wallet as to what happens in, a, in that scenario. Okay, perfect. We'll release that information uh, in due time. All right, that's awesome. Hopefully um, we see the first people in there end of next week. Now, I think um, a, a lot of people have been waiting on some app updates uh, just to clean up the comics in the store and a few other things. I think that was expected around now. Has, has that gone out then or was it close? It is very close. I just had the <clears throat> app build come in this morning with all of the final changes. So that's going to go through testing over the next couple of days. And yeah, I'm really excited to get that one rolled out uh, next week. All going well, of course. Um, yes. Yeah. And so this, this update has quite a lot of new features in it. Um, off the top of my head, I think I might have mentioned last time, but it will be the integration of comics into the main store landing page. So you'll no, long, no longer need to use that switcher bar at the top. Um, comics will also be will also show in the coming soon and latest drops section with their own banner. Um, and obviously the comics will appear on the uh, on the store landing page. Mm -hmm. uh, in, in addition to that, we've made some quite big updates in the market. <clears throat> Number one being uh, basically a restructure of of the comics section just to make it a lot more manageable now that we've got a lot more uh, comics in the system. Um, and that those updates also extend to collectibles as well, where we, now that there are, there are just so many thousands of, of listings on the uh, in the market, we've now moved to a more vertical scrolling list. Uh, so it's a lot easier to see and find either the edition or the price that you're looking for uh, in the market. So yeah, really looking forward to rolling that out and then getting some feedback. Of course, this is version one, so there'll no, no doubt be some you know, tweaking and evolution of the, of the updates. But overall, it's uh, absolutely a step in the right direction. Right. You there, uh, Reese? Did you get your mic muted? Oh, yeah. Sorry, mate. Yeah. Just talking to myself over here. That's fine. <laughs> <laughs> Doesn't matter at all. I think uh, people will be excited for that regardless. Um, yeah, the next thing on my list, uh, we removed some Captain Americas from the store in the, over the past couple of weeks. Um, do you want to just maybe give people some insight into what happens there? Do we burn them straight away? Do they go into a, you know some sort of holding wallet that never to return? How does all mm -hmm. that happen? How did it go down? Yep, that is exactly what happened. So basically, they get moved into a, a burn wallet um, within our within our back end. Uh, now, right now, I believe Immutable is just finalizing their burn functionality. Mm -hmm. So as soon as that is in place, then everything in that burn wallet will basically be sent uh, out of out of circulation. Now, <clears throat> one of the other points is that. Obviously, within the app, the, the total number of additions that were minted hasn't gone down. And the reason being is that we, because when the collectibles are purchased, it's actually random uh, uh, addition numbers. So there could potentially be someone out there with, you know, addition number 22,000. So <clears throat> what we're more than likely going to do is add another piece of metadata into the, into the collectible screen 
that will show, you know, the total available in circulation. So we'll always have there that there was, <clears throat> you know, 22,000 minted, um, but they will more than likely add another row in just to say that there is now, I think it was something crazy low in the end, like seven or 8,000 actually right. available. Yeah. Yeah, the number were removed, and and I guess moving forward, um, you know that that option is always available to us if we ever overshoot or if something's not as popular as we anticipate. Yeah, that's right. That was always part of. Um, <clears throat> to be honest, it was actually always a big part of um, David mm. and my strategy was that, and even built in, you know, all all into our back end systems, we have the ability to add an end date in for uh, you know collectibles that don't sell. But then something completely random happened, which is that everything sold out. So we haven't, <laughs> we haven't actually had to use that <clears throat> up till now. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, there, there'll definitely be some uh, improvements around that now that we are starting to burn. Yes. Yeah. And, uh, and just on that layer two burn wallet thing, uh, yeah, as you said, I don't know that Immutable have that enabled yet or they're building towards it. I think up until now to burn... From layer two, you would have to withdraw those assets to layer one and burn them on layer one or, or something like that. So makes sense to wait until their system is uh, up and running as well. So that's a um, bit of insight there. Uh, gents, because we're geniuses, we've decided to roll out some Disney stuff and then go straight into Decon, uh, where we'll be rolling out a heck of a lot more artists. Don't even, um, don't even talk to me about a race. My next two weeks <laughs> is basically less sleep than I already get. <laughs> uh, it should be easy because they're right next to each other, right? I mean, yeah, Decon's yeah, right yeah. next door to Disneyland, right? That's, yeah. how, that's how it works, right? Yeah, that's, that's, that, that's, a, that's a valid point, Alex. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I believe we're doing a giveaway in the later. Yeah, so let me touch on that real quick. Um, we have a, a good handful of Decon VIP passes to give away. Um, so if you're going to be in the area or don't mind traveling a little bit uh, to Anaheim, California, um, and make sure you know that this isn't uh, these passes are just uh, for a pass or no travel or accommodations will be provided, unfortunately. Mm -hmm. um, but if you are interested in joining us at Decon and many, many other designer toy and art brands, <laughs> uh, I've seen the floor plan and it looks amazing. We're right next to Medicom as well as Mondo and some other heavy hitters. Um, so please visit vv.me slash giveaways. And enter for your chance to win a VIP pass. That VIP pass includes Friday night VIP party access, as well as all three days of um, DesignerCon uh, general floor. So, yeah, uh, Trevor, uh, myself, Reese, Noah, we'll all be there, and we'd love to meet you. Absolutely, absolutely, we would. And just touching on that, that um, giveaways URL that you just provided. Is that, uh, we'll be using that universally now for, for these kind of sweepstakes? Yes, well? so it is the same URL that you probably entered uh, for your chance to win an Edo. Congratulations to those winners, by the way. Those Absolutely. have all been delivered. Uh, yeah, so ongoing, and we're excited to announce that we are going to be doing ongoing giveaways. So, you know, whether it's, you know, two, three times a month, or it depends on, you know, what else we have going on, but we're going to try to make sure that we're um, giving a little bit, a little something back, a little something, something. Absolutely. Absolutely. Everybody loves free stuff. So <laughs> I know I do. Yeah, that's it. That's it. And uh, while we've got you, Alex, uh, do you want to maybe just give people some drop information? Uh, we obviously have Halloween weekend coming up. which is exciting. Yes. So two drops tomorrow. Uh, really excited about these. As uh, David mentioned at the top of the AMA, we have uh, two Marvel Studios What If um, themed drops one zombie hunter spider-man who is rocking the cloak of levitation dr strange's cloak of levitation uh if you haven't seen the episode i won't spoil it but you know some sh some stuff goes sideways uh and uh unfortunately uh, the sentinel of liberty has been infected and has become a zombie and uh poor cap has to go up against uh his his friend and teammate <laughs> uh, <laughs> Spidey, who is uh, now basically the last Avenger. So uh, we have two of those uh, statues for each of those uh, characters in mm -hmm. blind, box, blind box format. Uh, Zombie, Zombie Hunter Spider-Man drops at 8 a.m. Pacific, and Zombie Captain America drops at noon Pacific. Awesome, awesome. Thank you yeah. for that. And I might just chime in with one of the pre-submitted questions here. 
uh, just to get some insight. It's, it's well timed there. Uh, Senator Palpy wants to know, uh, why does Zombie Hunter Spider-Man have an FA tag when it's just Peter Parker in a different costume? Uh, so, you know, just want some more definitive information about when we use the FA tag, what that applies to, all of those kind of things. Dan, you on me? Dave, you want to tackle that one? Yeah, sure. Uh, so just so everyone understands, it, it is the first appearance of this character. And um, I, we, we do understand that Spider-Man has been out. Uh, that was the comic version. And definitely this mm-hmm. is the Marvel Studio uh, What If version. It's a, number one, it's a complete, you know, different series. Mm-hmm. Uh, it has, a, you know, Doctor Strange, Cozona, et cetera. And we, uh, you know, we we have a massive plan with these Marvel Studio and other studio IPs coming out. Um, And we do have other series will be rolling out uh, as part of this whole franchise. Mm -hmm. So what, um, obviously, as the name would suggest, it's the first appearance of this character. Um, so, So really the differentiator is, and, and I think this was hard for me to understand originally when I think Marvel, I just think all of it counts as Marvel. So one Spider-Man is one Spider-Man, but there's actually almost countless story arcs and whether it was comics or shows or, or this thing. Or and that thing. multiverses as well. And multiverses. Different universes. Yeah. Yes. Yes. So really it's, you know, it's, it is a standalone character and that's what, uh, what grants it that. First yeah. Appearance. De- yeah, definitely. Um, and also I, I, I think, um, you know, you guys do want to keep your eye out on the screen. We are, I think my last AMA, I mentioned, you know, we are going to try to bring one other characters or one other item in DV will be animated. And, you know, that that item, you know, will come to a light. Um, yeah, so I we, we hope everyone enjoy that. Um, and it's just part of the yeah. whole learning process and yeah i mean and we'll we'll be giving out more clues in you know coming weeks or months uh, of what this whole thing we're doing is all about and you know turning things alive uh for me and dan it's very important that the collectible have utility value outside being just you know what we do them in the showroom or post Mm -hmm. them in ar uh we want to start adding layers to them and you know really tell the story behind these um, uh, brains that we're bringing alive. Yeah. Yeah. And David, I have a, a question, follow-up question on that. Uh, are you aware, um, since you first mentioned that in a Twitter space some odd weeks ago, uh, of just the uh, amount of wild speculation um, <laughs> that you've caused in the community? And the second part to that is, do you feel bad about that at all? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, I, 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 I think... I, I think that I, I feel bad for Dan. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Dave. It's, it's nice to hear it from your lips. <laughs> it's like, what? I mean, it's not in my calendar. I mean, where's the asset? Who's making this? I mean, you, you know, it's not in the pipeline. No one knows about it. Uh, so I think there was a team, you know, had to get, get to work straight away. Um, and this, this, this one is quite different. And it's going to be more fun. You know, there's a lot of things being put into it and thoughts on on this one. So I hope you guys have fun on it. Yeah, and I I am sorry, uh, you know. (laughs) (laughs) And we believe it. We truly believe it. Uh, You sound sound so. So much conviction. (laughs) Hey, uh, so I know we we have a lot to get to today, obviously, still. Um, There's going to be a a fair amount of questions about uh, MCP, OUP. uh, But I do want to get quickly to a couple of um, special guests before we kind of get into the meat in that, before we uh, Mm -hmm. lose them. So uh, that being said, everybody, let's, you know, give a big warm welcome to... uh, Dear old Uncle Jeremy. Uncle Jeremy. Oh, my brother Jeremy. Uncle Jeremy. Hello. Uncle Jeremy's here, everyone. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> welcome, welcome. How are what you, What you got, Jeremy? I'm good. No, I just, listen, it's, uh, I just wanted to say to this team, uh, well done. Reese, Noah, Alex, Trevor, Dan, David, congratulations. You've achieved something that is absolutely unprecedented 
um, achieving the entire Disney, Disney Plus portfolio, inclusive of Marvel, Star Wars, Pixar, Princess, Disney Plus. It's a spectacular move. It is truly an unprecedented move. I mean, as you guys know, you guys know what I do. Uncle Jeremy makes toys, Pokemon, <laughs> Fortnite, Roblox. But you may not know, we're also a partner for Marvel. We took over the costumes business this year. We're about to announce a bunch more within the Disney portfolio. But I, but I don't know if people understand contextually how high of an achievement it is to uh, accomplish that. So you go look in any category, uh, whether it's toys, collectibles, bedding, apparel, socks, shoes, whatever it may be. I defy you to find another partner that's got the entire portfolio. It's a very, very powerful move. And I just wanted to tell you guys how sincerely uh, thrilled I am for you as a friend and as a uh, as a holder of Omi. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm also quite spectacularly satisfied with this move. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Hey, and Jeremy, Thank you, Jeremy. Uh, happy, Thank you. happy birthday, sir. Thank yes, you so much. Thank birthday. you. Thank you. Thank you. I'm, I'm old. I'm old. <laughs> <laughs> it happens. It happens. Not as old so. as we feel after this week. <laughs> <laughs> well, it, it, it uh, you know, it, it, it always looks easy when someone's executing at a high level. Um, but, you know, behind the scenes, what, what you, what you've all had to accomplish in a short period of time is, is nothing short of spectacular. Thank you so awesome. much. Jeremy. Thank you. Jeremy. Yeah. Really, Appreciate you coming uh, up. I know we always like to get you up on on stage when we can, but uh, definitely absolutely. wanted to say hello. Thank Appreciate you. Thank you. Feel, feel free to toss me back into the audience because I'm 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 just enjoying this very much. But <laughs> if, if you see any value in having me up here, I'll stay for a while. <laughs> yeah, sure. I'd actually love to uh, have you chomp the. Uh, what would you call it? Chinwag, as, as OBL calls it, uh, a bit here. Anytime. <laughs> yeah, we brought brought up another. Uh, you know, well-known uh, community member as of late, definitely has dipped his toes in and uh, we've seen him all on videos and the community is definitely happy to have him part of the VV fam. So let's all uh, say hello to Andre. Hello, Andre. What's hello, up? Andre. How you guys? Hey, hey, Andre. How are you? <laughs> Good. I love your guys' stuff. Oh my gosh. You guys are awesome. <laughs> Thanks, mate. I have, I have one big question to you guys. Mm -hmm. When... Pokemon. Oh <laughs> man, you not, you're, not, you're not allowed to do that when they announce Disney and Disney Plus. Yeah. That's, that's true. That's true. That's, that's true. That's <laughs> true. No, the Disney Plus is incredible. I'm so excited about that. Uh, how long are the utility, uh, I guess, tokens are going to last, do you guys think? Is it like for a limited amount of time or can we pass on the tokens maybe to our friends who don't have Disney Plus? What do you guys think? Yes. Uh, great, great question, Andre. Um, so the deal that we have strike with uh, Disney Plus is that the, the code is not uh, for resale purpose, obviously, uh, but they are transferable to your friends, family members. Um, you, you do have to use the mark before the end of this uh, calendar year. So 31st of December, um, you will have to activate. So it's only available for new subscribers or people who have their subscription just ran out and they, they can use it as a new s subscription. So it's, uh, it's pretty good. Um, and gotcha. yeah, up, up to end of the year, is enough time for those uh, family and friend who wants to join on board. That's awesome. I've also been trying to get every drop, and I've actually competed <laughs> against my friend uh, Foster. He also does a lot of uh, VV and Omi mm -hmm. content, and I actually like just destroyed him in button mashing, <laughs> which I'm really proud about. But I can't seem to get a drop. Is there a trick to it, or is there going to be some sort of more of a lottery system in the future, or has that been implemented already? Uh, we are definitely looking at other drop mechanisms. Um, as the audience probably knows, you know, we, we started off with your standard traditional drop and then we've added in blind box. Um, and, and, you know, as the company grows and scales and, you know, we're still doing drops of 20,000 collectibles, but when we have a million users, um, that is going to become uh, obviously more competitive. So uh, we are looking at waiting room type systems. However, as I've mentioned in the past, you know, there's a lot of uh, exhilaration around the existing drop model. And I think that is something that we very much want to maintain 
um, regardless of whatever type of system we go to. So, uh, we, yes, to, to answer your question, we, yes, we are looking into those things, but we, we still want to make sure that we stay true to the fun and excitement and pain that is the drop. <laughs> that makes a lot of sense. <laughs> One last question for you guys. Uh, am I crazy for spending twelve grand on a secret rare Spider Man? No, no. <laughs> only twelve grand. You're, you're asking the wrong people. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, not financial advice. Yeah, not, not financial, financial advice. advice. <laughs> yeah. I'll really... tell you this. I'll tell you this. Coming from a pure collector standpoint, again, Uncle Jeremy here, also a big collector. Um, if when you look at the Grail items in any particular category. Um, there tends to be a pretty specific audience for that grail item. And um, it tends to really, really, uh, over the course of time, be some of the best performing within any portfolio. Uh, so you see that in cards. Like, for instance, I'll give you an example. A 1952 Topps PSA 10 Mickey Mantle in the year 1999 sold for $250,000. Today, it's a $40 million card. Wow. Again, there's absolutely zero from a financial, there's no promises, there's no guarantees, a platform has to remain relevant. Um, but I've personally rarely seen a platform that has this much community uh, attachment. So yeah, grails um, are always something that uh, I specifically look towards and, and look, look to try to acquire. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah, I just got my mint number is so cool. It's 0862, which was apparently... Uh, it was uh, the 15th issue, which was the first time that Spider-Man came out, which was on August 1962. Oh, there you go. Uh, it's so cool. So cool. But, yeah, I'm so excited for the future. You guys are awesome. Thank you for uh, having Congrats, me. Congrats, man. Thanks, Andre. Yeah, thank you. Thanks, Andre. Thanks, 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 <laughs> yeah. And, Drop and in the video soon. If you guys nice. want to talk, let me know. I'd, I'd love to know any kind of info. Sign NDAs, whatever. I want to be a part of it. Awesome. awesome. Yeah, the inside right scoop, Dave. Watch out. <laughs> <laughs> All right, you guys. Take care. Right, Thank you, Andre. Right. All right. So with that, we have a lot to cover still. Um, Master Collector Program. How about that? Yeah, how about that? Blast. Party time. Absolutely. Uh, so how do we want to kick this off? Uh, do we want to give like a high-level uh, overview of what went into it, Dan, and you know yeah. the reason why it was delayed. <laughs> Me, um... <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Um, so, yeah, uh, obviously, as anyone who has read the MCP article can uh, pro probably understand that you know we have spent a lot of time uh, working through it to make sure that there, you know, it's not just a, a very high level simple system. You know, VB has a lot of complexity in it. Um, you know, without the master collector, <clears throat> and obviously there's various uh, uh, different collectibles and different rarities and, and low mints and all that kind of thing. So we wanted to make sure that the that the 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 MCP was a very robust program and a program that had depth, and also a program that would have multiple routes to to securing points. You know, whether you want to go down the set path or the collectible path. Um, or the, you know, the different rarities. So um, I'd, li I'd just like to thank everyone for their patience. Um, I have seen quite a lot of videos. Um, Foster Hilt, I, I watched yours. I thought it was very cool. So thank you for your objective viewpoint of, uh, uh, of everything that you reviewed. Um, and, and so the, you know, really the, the like I say, the program has, has been designed to be, to be fairly robust and to have quite a lot of depth to it. And I'm, and, I was actually, I was, I was joking to Dave, <clears throat> um, but I think the, the day before we dropped the article uh, that I was, I was saying to David, uh, you know, give it, give it two days and there'll be spreadsheets out and all that kind of thing. But uh, boy, was I wrong. I think it was two hours <laughs> and then yeah. someone had, had put, I think, yeah, what was it? VV, VV set list. Well done to whoever put that together. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, yeah. Amazing. The, the, the speed of which, uh, you know, people like, um, uh, non Duck, I think, and, and, uh, yeah, Rebel Duck had his had his breakdown. <clears throat> um, so uh, it's great to see that that stuff from the community. Um, now, uh, obviously, as we uh, as you guys will know from the two massive bold disclaimers in the MCP, <laughs> this is our first uh, iteration. And you know, like everything, <clears throat> we love to get community feedback. Uh, and we obviously we you know we try to take the 
the master collector program or whatever we develop as far as we can and try to make it as polished as possible. Um, <clears throat> but there is always feedback from the community. Um, and that is why we like to put these articles out. So you guys can actually, you know, come back to a, come back to us with what you like, what you don't like, what, what does work, what doesn't work. And so today is really an opportunity to, uh, you know, just jump in and ask some questions. Uh, two things that I will kick off. I know that there is a lot of uh, uh, sentiment of some sort around secret rares. Mm -hmm. And I'd just like to say that, you know, we have put a lot of thought into how this program works. Um, it wasn't written the day before that it went out. There has been significant amounts of modeling to make sure that the system is fair across the board. <clears throat> and that means it's fair if someone purchased a, a secret rare for $7 or they purchased it for $10,000. Um, there's been a lot of thought and a lot of calculation gone into the numbers. So um, I am looking at potentially revising the secret rare number. However, <clears throat> uh, as you know, some of you guys that I've spoken to in, in the community, it is a very fine balance and we need to make sure that we are taking into account every variable and every factor <clears throat> that we can so not to uh you know bloat the system in one particular area or ensure that the system can't be abused in in any way so um so that was the first point um and then the second point was around the wagering of uh of points in the in the drop lottery uh, and, and to be honest, I, I mean, I went back and forth with quite a lot, a lot of the team members as to whether we, you know, if you take part in the drop lottery, um, you know, whether you win or not, your points are, are currently spent. So there was a lot of back and forth internally. And, you know, we really liken it to it is a lottery. You know, if I go and buy a lotto ticket today uh, and I don't win the $10 million dollars, you know, I can't turn up to the lotto shop and just say, hey, I didn't win. So, you know, can you give me back my 10 bucks? Mm -hmm. So, this there, again, there was a lot of thought and a lot of modeling um, going into this. And I think one other thing to consider, um, uh, and I think I think I also heard this on uh, Foster's video, which is that, you know, the drop lottery is high risk, high reward. You know, you're, you have the opportunity to guarantee yourself a, uh, you know, a, a specific rarity in the drop depending on your on how much you wager and and you know that is the risk that is the game um however in saying that you know we we are revisiting the model just to see if that will still continue to work for the time being that's how it's going to remain um but obviously i love to hear the feedback that, that's out there in the community and, and again uh you know i applaud the, the people who put the videos out within within hours of that. Um, I sort of anticipated that my Saturday morning I'd get up and watch some videos, <laughs> but no, it was like lunchtime Friday, there was already stuff out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that bit shouldn't surprise you uh, at all. Maybe we'll just take a, a moment to remind people as well. I know it's in that article, but for the drop lottery, that is for an allocation of collectibles. It's not, you, you know, the lottery doesn't run for the entire drop and, and you have to wager to participate. Uh, you will still be able to participate in the drops exactly the same way as we do now. Yeah. And, and that as well, you have to be very strategic on what you're putting all your points, mm -hmm. wagering all your points on, because, you know, this isn't going to be something where the whales can automatically just bid them or wager the most points every time. Um, you know, they have to be strategic about it. And if yeah. they wager all their points and they don't get it, or if they get it, then they kind of start from zero or however many they wagered, right? So. Yes trying to spread it out yeah but with that yeah. said you know i was want to start to get to the community because we've already kind of been on for an hour here i know uh i'm going to pull up a few that i know have questions have reached out to me with questions or have sent questions in that i think that would be is better vocalized um uh, vocally <laughs> so uh i'll go ahead and, and turn that over then to jail mike who is uh well known in the community as a, one of our senior mods and has really kind of uh, helped um, helped shape this is just as much as, you know, mm. Noah or I have uh, with the, you know, uh, in, in general, kind of like asking the right questions and then we would go and kind of tweak those, um, some of those, that wording and things like that. So appreciate you, Jeremiah. Thank you very much for being on stage with us uh, and what's your question? 
Um, I actually have two questions. Uh, the first one is about the Master's Collectors Program. Um, er, first of all, every time I read it, I get more excited about it. <laughs> <laughs> That's the first thing. But um, the question I have was regarding the rank system. It says that for the first six people, they get a free subscription to Master Collector Pro. Um, my question is, what if you are ranking number seven, you pay for a subscription, and then the next day you're ranked number six? Um, how does that work? And the follow-up question to that is, what if you're number six, and then you go back to seven, how long do you get to keep your Master Collector Pro status? Right. Um, um, uh, DMI, you may, you may need to reread that section, or, or maybe, <laughs> we, maybe we need to rewrite it. But yeah, uh, it's people. not actually, yeah, it's not actually the first six people. It's the it's the top six ranks. So out of the 23 ranks, that would be the 17 upwards, if my math is correct, which it probably isn't. Um, those people who are in the top six ranks, which could potentially be thousands of people, um, they will be given free access to MCP Pro. For the reason being is that, you know, if you are a top rank user, then you obviously are a, a very strong collector and you're obviously very strong um, uh, usage within the app. And for us, you know, we just want to reward those people for, um, you know, for being such a big part of, uh, of the VB platform. Mm -hmm. But do they lose the rank? Like, let's say you're, you are part of the top six rank. And then let's say the next day, the new points gets flowed in and the ranks updated. And that number, that person that was in the sixth rank drops down to number seven. Do they automatically lose their pro status? Yes, they will. And, th and that's, that happens over a 24 hour period like every day when it updates. That is correct. Yes. Okay. Uh, my second question is actually from the Discord community, something that came up that I wanted to ask. So with the move to Amiable X, does it change the status that, let's say, Todd Batman, it's being reminted on Amiable X. Does he lose the status of being the first NFT because it's being reminted again and the original one on the Go chain is removed? No, no. We'll be doing everything we can to retain. Uh, obviously, we are reminting. Um, but, you know, in terms of the, the drop date, the metadata that comes with it, that he, Batman number 100 will always be known as the OG Batman. That's awesome, because that's my favorite collector. Cool. I, that's what... <laughs> awesome. Thank you, Jim. I appreciate it. Thank you. you. Uh, Prop. What's up, Prop? What's going on, brother? Um, hi, David. Hi, Reese. Uh, hi, Dan. Uh, nice to speak, nice hey, to speak with you guys. Congratulations on um, this uh, accomplishment. Absolutely massive. Um, I, I, I see there's um, uh, probably the biggest thing in contention from the Master Collector program amongst uh, users is uh, what you mentioned, uh, whether or not the, the uh, secret rare um, collectibles, whether it be comics or the uh, statue collectibles are, you know, uh, have a high enough point um, uh, reward to them. And uh, I I honestly personally think that you guys really did put a tremendous amount of thought into it. And um, I, I don't think it was uh, as inconsiderate as some people are, are, are saying. Thank you. Um, I, I do know that you have kept in mind people uh, or the, the users who, you know, uh, don't have much of an, an advantage as you know some people who have you know un, unlimited amounts of money right um and i absolutely i i really respect that and i think that there is uh something to be said about you know aspiring to advance you know and things for to, to not just be sort of too easy or, or given to you with that said um i think I, I just wanted to ask is is one of the maybe perhaps a solution to that is maybe to have a milestone bonus for holding secret rares or maybe only secret rares so if you maybe hold it for for every 30 days there's an extra bonus to that which will incentivize holding it longer mm. actually um rather than flipping it which makes it even a, little, a bit harder to get rather than just giving it an extra you know two three points which could you know could be something that could easily solve it and mend everyone together there i also had a um a really interesting um uh, thought brought up last night in a Twitter space that about um, FAs and uh, first appearances and and the value of uh, collectibles from season one to season two. And I was wondering if you guys considered giving. And I know this is early on and it's the first draft, but have you also considered 
giving an extra bonus on first appearance collectibles or first edition collectibles? Um, thanks, Prop, uh, for the great question. So uh, just to address the last one, um, there, there won't be daily points for FAs or, or CEs. However, there will be badges. And when you earn a badge, that badge gives you points. And badges will have <clears throat> multiple different levels. Uh, you know, like you, you see in most popular games now, you might, be, you might get FA badge number one, you know, potentially right up to FA badge number 10. And each time you get one of those badges, you will get some points around it. Um, <clears throat> we do need to be a little bit careful about uh, making it making the system even more complex than it is now. Uh, like I say, we spent a lot of time getting the balance right, and that's the main. That's really the main uh, emphasis around the points that we have given, in the sense that you know. We, we need to make sure that somebody new coming into the app is doesn't feel uh, like they are completely out of reach of you know of, of working their way up the levels, and we need to make sure that those people who are already the higher level um, are getting an advantage for for what they're holding. But to address your first question, I would actually just like to really go back and, and take a step back and just remember that these points are really nothing but a small side feature, a gamification feature in the app to make the app a little bit more enjoyable. And of course, so you can flex over your mates. Oh, you're only a level 100. What a loser. <laughs> we just need to make sure that, you know, the, the, the joy and the value <clears throat> is in the collectible itself. I mean, I'm not going to go and buy a secret rare because I'm going to get point extra 0.5 points per day. I mean, that's, that's not how we should be thinking about this. You're buying that SR because number one, you know, you're one of 250 people in the world who owns that. There is massive value in that alone. And in addition to that, you know, you're holding a collectible that looks amazing and is, is highly coveted by many other people. And in most cases has a high or well, a higher monetary value. Those points are really the core when, you, when it comes to thinking about a collectible. So uh, I know there are a lot of very passionate people out there about the MCP, but I think I just want to remind you that this is just an extra feature in the app. You know, it's not, it's not the be-all and end-all of SRs. And in fact, you know, my, my opinion is that, um, you know, I saw some of the SRs going for cheaper in the market. I mean, you know, I hope a lot of people snapped them up because there were people making very rash decisions based on a tiny feature in the app that's coming out. So that's my position on it uh, at the moment. Um, like I say, we've done a lot of modeling um, to get the balance right overall. Um, however, we of course take feedback from the community, um, but please don't expect that there are going to be significant amount of points for an SR because it will literally throw the model out and ultimately, <clears throat> it will become a game of whoever has the most money is going to win. And that is absolutely not our ethos at Vivi, which is why we sell collectibles from, you know, $13 upward. You know, we're not selling things yeah. to sort of five or 10 grand. So there's, there, there are so many factors that come into play when building out something like the MCP. And I can absolutely appreciate and understand that when this model comes out, a lot of people are, are more than likely seeing it and interpreting it based on their own collection. Um, but that's obviously something that we can't do on our side. This needs to be a, a holistic, ubiquitous system that is designed to help everyone, whether you're a beginner or whether you're a, um, a master collector, get through, the, get through the ranks and levels. Well said. Thank you, Dan. I, I do believe that will be the prevailing sentiment. I, th thank you so much for pointing that out. Thank you. Thanks, Rob. Um, so on that note, we have a, a pillar of the comic collector uh, community uh, with us on mm -hmm. stage. So uh, Dozer, if you wouldn't mind offering your, your counterpoint to this, because I know you've you've been pretty vocal about this yeah, the absolutely. last day or so. Yeah, first of all, thanks for having me, Vivi fam. And uh, massive thank you to Dan. Dan actually reached out to me and we had a really good conversation last night regarding this topic so there's actually two schools of thought the school of thought one is that only the rich people in the wells will prevail 
that's not the case because I'm not rich and I'm not a whale. A lot of the people in our community have decided to sell off their collectibles to get comic books. Okay, so they've decided that they liked the comic book better, so they've they've concentrated on that. Like Dan said earlier, there should be various routes to the Master Collector program. First of all, I loved the program. The only thing I was against was the valuation of Secret Rare Comics. You should not be getting 0.5 more comics for, points for the Secret Rare Comics as for a common. So with that being said, that's all I want to see. I want to see people to have that option to become a master collector, whether they want to focus on collectibles or comic books. And with that being said, by doing that, it'll be better for the ecosystem because by giving Secret Rare comic book collectors just a little more points than 1.5, it'll be that awesome incentive for them to hold it. Because otherwise, like we're seeing right now, they'll just dump them and buy collectibles like like me. Like I love my Marvel Comics 1 Secret Rare. I love my Kang. But I mean, if, if, it, if it meant that much, to other people, they would just sell it right now, cash in their 20k gems, and just buy collectibles instead. And that's not what I want to see. I actually want, I mean, these these are so hard to obtain on drop. They're so hard to buy in the market that the people actually that sold their collectibles to get that special item and they want to hold it, to some extent, should be rewarded to the point where they also can become a master collector. So, I mean, like me, I love comic books. My head exploded when we got comic books. My head's exploding now that we're getting Star Wars. And at the end of the day, we've gotten <laughs> to that point where we have so much stuff incoming that people are only going to collect what they want to collect. Yeah, exactly. And, and, you know, I appreciate the conversation that we had last night. Obviously you are a, a pillar in the comic book community. <clears throat> so it's very valuable to get your, your feedback. Um, and, and like I said, it, it is something that we are taking, uh, 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 we are reviewing. And like I say, we just have to be careful that it doesn't blow the model out. But I would like to touch on something that you said, which is that people are selling their collectibles to buy the comics they want. And that is that is and always has to be the core of why you're collecting. And I, I think I can just tell the audience now, if you're collecting for points, you, you, you're doing this thing the whole wrong way. I mean, yes, you will get some advantage for points, but, you know, we're, we're, a, we're, a, we're a collectibles business. And ultimately, that's where, uh, like I mentioned just before, you know, where the value, uh, et cetera, comes in. But... Yeah, uh, Doza, really appreciated your feedback. It was great to get your, your insights from y yourself and the other uh, people you were talking to. So, um, yeah, totally. Let's, let's and it talk. wasn't just me. Like yesterday I was driving and my freaking phone just started blowing up with texts <laughs> from a bunch of random members of the community. And I'm like, what the hell? So I started checking. And yeah, like once I saw what they were you know, concerned about, I'm like, okay, yeah, I could see that being a problem. One common comic, one point, secret rare. 1.5 i could see that being some issue like i said i'm not asking i don't think any of these people are asking for like 50 points for a secret rare just something more you know more in the line of of a, of a set that's harder to complete like a like you, you know like the the other more difficult sets to complete that's how difficult it is to obtain a secret rare on some of these reese i think you suggested um uh, 0.501 points didn't you no, that's that was me. I, I was just joking around saying that. Um, but yeah, no. Um, th thank you for the feedback. One hundred percent. I mean, that's exactly why we put these articles out because you know we we want to hear from people in the community. It is a complex model, and you know maybe there are some things that we might have brushed over a bit too lightly on, or one of the specific routes uh, isn't yielding as quite as much as another route. Um, so yeah, thank you. Um, we we. We'll be doing another deep dive into it. And just awesome, Dan. Thank you very much. Thanks a lot for reaching out to me last night. That actually meant a lot to me. And uh, thanks for having me on, Alex. Of course. Yeah, man. Yeah. Thank you very much. Um, let's move on to uh, Sparky. Hi. Thank you. All right. I just had two questions. <laughs> and the first one was more clarification on what you said earlier. Um, we do all know that Todd is like the first Batman and all that, but when it is reminted, is it going to hold the respective dates or is it on the minted date of Immutable? That is something I will need to check with the developers. So let me circle back on that one. Okay. Thank you. I appreciate it. And then do you have an ETA on Showroom 2.0? Now, Showroom 2.0 is looking amazing. And I'm actually going to be posting some videos of uh, both the new showroom and also the new empty space showroom uh, on my Twitter this week. Um, basically, everything's ready to go. Now, my only kind of concern, which, <laughs> uh, you know, we've, uh, and of course, I learn all of my concerns by mistake, uh, is that mm -hmm. that is quite a big update to the app going in. <clears throat> and that is going to be happening right before Disney and right before Decon. So from my perspective, I just need to make sure that the timing is right because I wouldn't want 
any issues or any problems in, in the app uh, that might uh, disadvantage people from getting, uh, you know, from taking part in those in those drops. So, uh, thank you for hanging tight, everyone. Um, I know the new showroom looks so beautiful. I mean, I, I almost feel like I feel a little bit of vomit come up in my throat when I go back into the showroom V1. <laughs> Uh, so it, it is a, it is a massive um, update, and the empty showroom has got some really cool features. Um, I can't remember if I if I touched on this last time, but basically what you can do in the in these in this empty space. So as you probably all gathered, there's no walls or a gallery showroom around it. You're just in this kind of grid, um, what what a bit like a Tron kind of area, <clears throat> uh, and then you can place all of your collectibles, move them around, scale them as you normally do. Um, but when you when you place those collectibles in AR, uh, we have a new feature that we've added in called uh, move move set or move group. And what this allows you to do is, let's say you've spent you know a couple of hours setting up all of your collectibles in a in a really beautiful layout, and you want to drop those collectibles in AR, but have them all positioned somewhere. Like you might want to put it on a shelf or along the wall. Now. What would be extremely painful, and I think what people have had to do up till now, is move each of those collectibles individually. But now with the new move set feature, you can basically turn on move set, and then that will allow you to scale, rotate, move all of the collectibles in that scene uh, in one go. So there's, there's, I'm very excited to see um, you know, what people are going to do once we start to get this um, empty space showroom out. And you know, we, we can start seeing some really cool you know, collectible dioramas in uh, in AR. Yeah, I think all just, the uh, all the Voltaholics will be happy. Just with a that. touch point. I've been waiting for the showroom 2.0 for so long. Well, I yeah. make my <laughs> I make my own room, which I'm going to put on my Instagram of my showroom 2.0 tonight. It's a special preview. Oh, okay. special preview. Right. Okay, Wait, did special I, did I, did preview. Are you, are you trying to trump my preview on Twitter next week? <laughs> yes. yes. <laughs> I'm post my. All right. Well, well, maybe we should have a little competition. Let's put up a vote. Who's got the best showroom? <laughs> oh. So please do stand by. My 2.0 long-awaited showroom coming. Coming. I don't know about right. you guys, but I feel like we're about to get you'd. <laughs> You're about to get you for sure. <laughs> It's going to be a shoebox or something. <laughs> All right, let's move on to Austin. What's up, Austin? Hey, guys. How's it going? Uh, love everything you guys are doing. Uh, congratulations again. Uh, so I, I, just, I know how the, the, some of the community, the community is feeling uh, about the MCP. Um, I feel like a lot of people are struggling getting drops, right? So they think it's an opportunity to use this lottery um, to their as at most advantage to get on the drop. Mm -hmm. Um, so that leads me to my question, because I know a lot of people say they hustled and they worked hard, which is true, but they're, they were fortunate to be early, right, to the game. Now, when you buy a collectible, it shoots up to like $1,000 or $700 for an ultra rare, right? So my worry is uh, the small fish and the whales. I know people don't like talking about it, but I don't mind talking about it. Um, so uh, like in gaming, let's say Apex Legends, I don't know if you guys played that game, they have a ranking mode. Uh, and in that mode, you you fight up against your own rank. And so what worries me about the lottery is, let's say I want Darth Vader, because who doesn't? Um, so I put all my lottery tickets in to get try to get a Darth Vader. Um, and uh, let's say 100 whales or 1,000 whales do the same. Well, they're automatically going to outbeat me, right? And then someone made a good point before saying, okay, well, they, they took Darth Vader for sure. Maybe you can go for Yoda when it comes up. But I feel like, I don't know, I feel like it's kind of a losing game. So that's why I thought, like, if we're already in a rank system, wouldn't it make sense to battle your own rank? Or another idea I was thinking about is if we had, like, a 50% against 50%. So you said there's 23 ranks, so let's say 12 against 11. So the top between, let's say, 12 to 1 and then uh, 13 to 23 would be part of the lottery system and then you would battle between there. Um, yeah, that was my idea for that point. Um, I have a lot more. Um, so. Yeah. Correct me if I'm wrong. Um, I mean, obviously the points expire after six months, right? So that mechanism is designed to force people to spend them. 
But with the amount of drops and content coming, I, I personally don't think that that's going to be much of an issue. Dan, did you want to weigh in? Yeah, yeah. I, I would say the same content. thing as well, that, you know, as people who have been around for the past six months, you know, you, you all know that our drop frequency has uh, uh, rapidly gone up, much to my own detriment. Um, but it is, and that is something we, we're more than likely going to anticipate happening in 2022, where there will be more and more drops. And the reason for this is purely that, you know, we are bringing on different types of collectible content. And I think moving into the future, um, you know, people are going to have to pick and choose what they want. And while I agree that, you know, something like Darth Vader or Yoda um, are going to be very, very popular items, um, I, I think we, we're going to start seeing people more picking and choosing what they want. Now, there, there will always be whales. That's normal in, in any, even in the physical collectible world. I mean, I know a whale. His name's David Yu. He just goes in and buys everything. <laughs> uh, so, um, but uh, you, you did raise a, a, a good point, uh, which I had considered quite carefully, which is, you know, potentially breaking the drop lottery up uh, into the different tiers. Um, However, you know, I think there's many different variables that we need to consider. And that is that I could be a new user and I could be ranked number two, but, you know, I might have a ton of cash sitting in my bank. So, you know, it's not necessarily that um, the, the rank is going to specifically help you out, but I will revisit that again as, as a potential uh, option. However, <clears throat> Reese touched on, uh, also touched on the, the fact that points expire. You know, so we know that people have to use points. And we also know that when you, when you wager your points, <clears throat> they are gone. So I, I think the, the way that the modeling has worked is that we can anticipate that when, when we first roll out the Master Collector program and all of the points are retroactively applied, there, there is going to be whales out there who will spend massive amounts of points um, to, to acquire what they want. But once those points are gone, <clears throat> they then need to rebuild those points. And that will give people the, the opportunity who, um, you know, may, who may not have, enough, have as much as they would have at that time of that drop. But, you know, by the next drop rolls around, you may actually end up having more than that whale because, you know, these points, they, they are designed to be spent. They're designed to expire for that exact reason to add some balance into it. So, you know, yes, I could come in as a whale and spend, you know, all 2 million of my points or however many I've got to secure a drop. <clears throat> but once those points are gone, you know, I then need to, you know, rebuild my points uh, at, the daily, at the daily point level. So there is a degree of, of fairness and balance in the, in the current model. Um, one other thing to consider is that you know, the idea of the, of the drop lottery is that, uh, you know, there, there are collectors out there, and I'm sure there are many on the call right now, who literally want to get certain types of, of rarities or s certain specific characters. And, you know, they are, you know, what really what we call our super collectors or quote unquote, the David Hughes of our, uh, of our audience. <laughs> um, and, you know, ultimately, these are the guys who complete all of the sets, they buy all of the collectibles. And so, you know, we also feel that, you know, if you are one of those people, we want to, you know, show you a bit of um, a, a bit of kudos or a bit of kindness to say, you know, thank you for being a part, uh, a, a, sorry, a, a, such an active part in our community. Um, and, and that is why they, uh, are, you know, are getting more points because of everything they own. So, we, uh, please be rest assured that we have considered all, well, okay, I won't say all, I'll say 98% of, um, of the factors involved. And that was one of the reasons why the MCP took so long to come out, was to make sure that we could have something balanced. But um, I, I thank you for your first suggestion, uh, Austin. I'll, mm -hmm. I'll, I'll revisit the multi-tier um, drop and just see how complicated that gets. Um, you had another question? Yeah, I have a Two, two short ones. Um, I know someone who uh, in the community was like thinking like he just wants VV versus land and that's it, right? Like, and it sucks for him because he's, he's planning on just to hold his points as long as possible. But that if he loses all his points in six months, it's kind of 
upsetting to him because the whole his whole goal is to buy VV versus Lane, right? Which I don't blame him. Well, I would I'll want just, to do the same. I just stop you there. Um, yeah. At this point in time, no one has ever said or ever published that points will get you land. So I think we've got to be very careful about the okay. assumptions that we make and the assumptions that we hear. Um, to qualify for land is going to be something almost equally as complex. It's not just going to be a one-dimensional, oh, that guy gets it because he's got the most points. There's going to be many factors involved. So, you know, okay. we, we've got to be very careful about making assumptions that haven't been published by VV. Okay, great. Thank you for that. Uh, my last point was the comics. Um, I've seen, like, people are kind of upset they're not getting as much love um, regarding the MCP. Um, and my suggestion, you guys do whatever you will. Um, I was thinking, like, if the Rare got 0.4, uh, Ultra got 0.6, and then Secret Rare get 1, I feel like that would provide uh, a lot more of assurance to, like, buy those comic books. Um, but, yeah, those, those are all in it. Um, thank you for your time. Cool, appreciate That's that. Awesome. And yeah, yeah, like I say, we will go back and revisit the uh, the points for the for the SRs. Great, uh, Sam. Hello, how's everyone doing? Well, thank Good, you. Thank man. you. Welcome. So, uh, first thing I just wanted to say was just a massive congratulations to what you guys have been able to achieve. You know, I got involved uh, back in March. You know, never even heard of an NFT before, and you know now I can't even imagine my life without them. So. You know, it's just been incredible to watch all of you been able to sort of build and mold uh, and bring people's favorite fandoms into the world and, and bring it through the medium of NFTs. You know, I'm incredibly excited to be a part of this vision. I'm excited to be on this space. I think we're in, it's an incredibly historic moment for Vivo. You know, Marvel was huge. Having the whole portfolio of Disney is just mind blowing. And, you know, I've just got to give props to you all. You know, you inspire me daily to uh, continue to push hard in my own goals and, uh, you know, it's a uh, an honour to be on this uh, on this space tonight. Thank you, thank you, brother. Thank you. Um, so, my question. Okay, so I'm sort of uh, a big collector of min numbers. You know, it's no secret. It's one of my favourite things to do. It's become a huge passion of mine. Um, what I'm asking today is, first of all, just a bit of a clarity on one of the things that I read. So, it's the 151st mint uh, that gets sort of the added added bonus. Does that start from the 40? Uh, of the public mints, or does that start from one to one fifty, or is that forty to one ninety? Uh, that would be forty to one four nine. Um, however, I, <clears throat> I was discussing it with the team this morning, uh, and we might look to up that uh, up that number. So, uh, you know, potentially, and this is not confirmation. Uh, you know, maybe <laughs> to up it to maybe two fifty or three hundred. Um, I, I think there, you know, there has to be a cutoff point. Uh, at, at some at, at some area you know i mean if you manage to get a 500 or 600 like yeah it is low overall but the idea of you know there are people out there who collect sub 100s and sub 150s and you know those are often difficult to get because the you know often the price and you know people don't often want to give them up yeah, I completely agree with you. you. know, we all have our different collecting goals. And, you know, for me, uh, going for lower mints has its own value. And just to see you even be acknowledged within the Master Collection Programme is, uh, is pretty cool to see. Um, and the second question I was going to ask was, uh, I guess it is more to reference maybe in potentially incorporating some uh, more areas of mints. I think it would be an uh, uh, interesting uh, idea to share with you guys. You know, um, something I was thinking about earlier was, um, potentially maybe instead of having daily recurring mint number, uh, uh, recurring points for, for lower mints, even though it's a great idea, maybe, uh, you know, for 2,000 and lower uh, or 3,000 and lower, have like a weekly uh, where maybe you get a point two uh, and sort of to encourage, because I think there's a lot of people that have different collecting goals of mint numbers. I know specifically for me, I talk to people every single day about mint numbers. I mean, it's literally taken over my life. Um <laughs> and so, yeah, I mean, it's literally like a huge part of, uh, of I, you know, I enjoy it. I enjoy doing it. It's a massive passion area for me. Um, but it's just interesting to see and speak to different people. You know, like you say, some people do go for the sub, uh, sub 100s, but I have people, you know, even in my household that go for sub 3000, sub 2000. So maybe it might be cool. I don't know. It'd be a cool idea to share with you guys just to, you know, even if it's just a weekly, you know, maybe 0 0.2 per, you know, mm. just something I just thought it'd be an idea like to share with you guys. Yeah, some sort of tiered thing. My only objection with that is that we're then directing people to specific collectibles as opposed to completing sets. You know, it's kind of encouraging that 
that <clears throat> Yeah, I mean, it could work. No, I, I actually know, agree with you. Yeah, when you it, it is true. I mean, obviously, I, I've, 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 I've you know questioned it in my own head before. I was like, you know, there is obviously caveats mm. to it. I agree with you. Uh, you know, I just thought it might be an interesting yeah. thing to share with you all. But, you know, like I say, it's just a pleasure for to be sure. up here and just even be invited. So, uh, like I said, they're my questions. Thank you for having me. And, uh, you know, what an honour to be a part of such a historic moment uh, for Viva. You know, congratulations you, to you all. Thank you. Yeah, thank, thank you, Sam. Appreciate it. And thanks for all. Yeah, support. really appreciate that. Um, now, yeah, just to touch on, uh, on your question, I uh, absolutely did scope out you know, different tiers of, uh, of low mint. <clears throat> and, um, you, you know, I think just, just remember that once the program is developed and rolled out, you know, it's not locked in stone. We may decide at some point that, you know what, we're going to add uh, a, a daily bonus for sub 1000s or sub 2000s. Um, the, you know, the, uh, we, we just need to be a little bit careful in the beginning. The system is already quite complex. So I think we want to get it out, make sure it's working, check all the numbers, make sure it's all, you know, on track as to what we thought. And then after that, we can always look to add new things. Um, I mean, even with the badges offer a huge opportunity as well. And, you, you know, who knows, maybe one day even a badge, if you manage, like, for example, let's say you, there's a royal flush badge because you've got a set with, uh, you know, consecutive numbers. Um, you know, there might be a badge for that. And potentially there could be certain badges that will give a, a, a daily recurring uh, point. So I, I think, you know, let's just remember this, this is, you know, first iteration. Um, I think it covers, I won't say 98% anymore. I'll say it covers 90% of, uh, <laughs> of, you know, what, what people were expecting. And, 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 you know, even though there's been a lot of negative sentiment out there, you know, overall the MCP is actually pretty damn cool. Um, it, it is a bit yeah. disappointing to see so much sort of negative stuff about us, you know, a small part of it when there is so much to celebrate about the overall program and you know the reason we're on this call today is so we can get your feedback and it's the reason we do put these articles out so uh yeah you know we'll have to say just quickly just to let you guys know you know my personal opinion on this you guys have done an incredible job of the master collection program i was just incorporating and sharing a few little ideas you know i love what you've done i love what you've been able to achieve with it and i think what you've been able to do in, in incorporating balance you know i think it's so important that we remember this, you know, and I think you guys, obviously you guys know that completely, you know, that the balance system. So everyone has that fair playing ground uh, to be able to do what they love and not have to be incorporated just around money, but around their fandoms and things they enjoy. Uh, yeah, I just got to give props to you all. I mean, it's been, it's, uh, it was a really fun read and a very exciting, uh, it's been next very exciting week. So thank you for having me again. Appreciate it. Thanks. Thanks, man. Thanks, Sam. I'm going to move ahead to a couple of questions from Twitter and then we'll get back to the stage. So, uh, Moji Foster, just give me a, a few minutes here. Um, Brother Jagamus asks if I have all of the amazing Spider Man issues, is that eight points a day? And if I have three of each of those issues, does that count as three completed series of the amazing Spider Man, uh, equaling to 24 no. points a day? No. no, it doesn't. Basically, uh, you, you can only get points for a set or a series once. So if you have, yeah, if you have multiple, I mean, with, with comic series, it's a bit different. Uh, obviously, with, with duplicate sets, you get a, a diminishing point. But the, the series are quite different in the sense that, uh, you know, a set is, is finite. You know, one, one, once all four are out, all four are out. Whereas <clears throat> with the comic series... Uh, as, as most of our fans probably know, you know, there's there's more and more comics coming out for Amazing Spider-Man or Fantastic Four. So the model is a little bit different. But uh, to answer the question, um, there, there won't be duplicate points for um, for having uh, multiple series. Got it. Thank you. Mark Omi asks, um, why haven't we seen the last item in the James Bond drop with it saying details coming mid-October? in the app that's a great question james um if you find out <laughs> let me know his name is mark but yes uh oh, sorry <laughs> yes, it's all right it's you know what I, and i've actually said this in a space before when somebody asked me um it really just comes down to making sure that collectible a is absolutely correct and there's a lot of approval process with these things sometimes it goes, it goes back and forth so although our best um you know our hopes were that it was going to be mid-october we're, we're just a little bit behind just to make sure that it is absolutely correct because it's going to be awesome. And, and I think we can, um, we can term this one Edo 2. 
Yes, Edo <laughs> too. Yeah, so yeah. we'll see it in six yeah, months. There's always got to be yeah. one collectible that's uh, that's pending, you know, because it, it's got to keep you on the hook somehow. <laughs> uh, okay, let's do one more from Twitter and we'll get back to the stage. Um, if I buy one of your NFTs off Immutable X, if, assuming that happens, will it count towards the MCP? Uh, yes, we do address this in the article. Now, so what happens here is that there are two ways to acquire a collectible. Number one is that you buy it within Vivi, and that is you either get it from the store or you get it from the market. If you do buy it within Vivi, then you will get the, uh, the one-off points as well as the daily points. Now, if you purchase the collectible off-platform, <clears throat> you will not get the one-off points, but you will, of course, get the daily points for any, any collectibles or comics in your, in your collection. I know that there was a lot of uh, uh, misinformation out there about transfers of collectibles not getting any points, but uh, I can assure you uh, that would be a real, uh, a real bad move on our part. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah, the, yeah. We, yeah, the difference there was the one-off versus the daily. And so, yeah, we needed exactly. to make sure that article yeah. was out before we <laughs> before we started uh, fud busting too hard because it really was mm -hmm. no point. The, the article was coming out imminently. I know. So the article wasn't even out. Sure. <laughs> yeah, it wasn't out. It it. Wasn't just out. just um, to piggyback on that and, and just to go a bit further because I know that question did ask more specifically about immutable. So in the case where some collectibles become interoperable, um, is it, is that transaction still recorded because of the smart contracts underpinning either platform? Do we well, know? Or your, is it still if your collectible is not that if your collectible is not in VV and it's somewhere else, then you're not going to get daily points for it. I mean, that makes no yeah. sense. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's it's more. Yeah, obviously that transaction record doesn't come with it when it comes back from Immutable. No, yeah. no. I, I could do. Okay. I could do, but but yeah, do. The, 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 but yeah, for the sake of the MCC, exactly. No. Yeah. yeah. Sure. Great. Cool. All right. Thank you. Let's go ahead and move on here. Uh, emoji, what's up? Hey, what's up? How you guys doing? Hey, well, man. Hey, man. Good. Good to hear. Um, yeah, I wanted to say, like, first off, I think the uh, the series idea for the comics is really, really cool. Um, because I feel that it it encourages people instead of you know having the set and owning different variations of the same story to actually own the entire story, you know, so they could follow along mm -hmm. and, um, and read it. So my question is more so along like the, cause there was a section about just, you know, how active you are on the app and, you know, getting points from there. So I know, you know, you, you guys had mis mentioned, you know, posting and like, you know, commenting and uh, like this, the standard stuff you would see in, um, in social media, but because you guys have so many things beyond what we see in social media like reading comics or you know what voltaholics are doing with building their showrooms and stuff would some of that stuff transfer over into those like active points for uh for for market uh yeah yeah ultimately for the yeah. mcp program absolutely all of those um fall under the dot 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 and more <laughs> in the in the daily points section um, so, and we, I think we might have mentioned in the article that we will be adding uh, more clarity around uh, what actions are, uh, are counted towards daily in-app activity. Um, and that is actually also an opportunity for me to bring up um, <clears throat> just some further clarity around the in-app activity points. Um, number one, you can't log out, log back in, log out, log back in, log out 25 <laughs> times to get points. For that matter, that is Damn not going to work. You will get one point <laughs> per day for entering the app. There will be various other um, uh, daily points which you will be able to score more on. Like, for example, posting or liking or commenting, you know, they won't be limited to one. Um, so, you know, we're making sure that, you know, I mean, obviously we, <laughs> we've been through a very interesting year um, and I've kind of designed the system from a, you know, under the no, no abuse, no scam uh, type headline because, you know, the, the, these points ultimately will give people advantage to to get some high value assets. So we do need to make that it, make sure it is very fair uh, across the board. So I, I just wanted to touch on that because I know that was a um, a question I saw pop up. 
Thank you. Appreciate it. Thanks, Emoji. And the man who's been name dropped a few times already this AMA. Let's move <laughs> on to uh, Foster Hills. Hey guys, my, my, my name's Foster and I'm addicted to Vivi. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that call happens after this. Oh, one, God, you're, you're in the right place. <laughs> put me through the ringer tonight here. I tell you, I got people blowing up my phone. I've never, never been so, uh, so, so crazy in a 15 minute period. So thank you for that. I, I appreciate that. But uh, I guess a comment and then a question first. Uh, as someone who plays a lot of video games, uh, you guys did great on the MCP article, uh, the gamification that's been added in, I think is, uh, uh, you know, brilliant. And it's something that people have been asking for, for quite a while. So it was very exciting to be able to spend six hours breaking it down yesterday with uh, <laughs> a couple other content creators, shout out to Cavell Anderson and Randy Chavez. Um, I, I guess one piece of perspective that I would just offer to people that maybe the team can't or won't say is that, you know, I own an Amazing Spider-Man number one comic that I got on the drop for $7. It's a secret rare, and it's worth about $8,000. I only get 1.5 points a day for holding it, and I could very well sell it and hold 10 common comics and get more points than that comic. But I think what people need to remember, and it's echoing Dan's sentiment perfectly, is, you know, is earning points on the app the reason that we started collecting? Like, is this what the community has been boiled down to? I think what people need to remember, and not to downplay the value of the MCP, because it is fantastic, but what do points really get you, right? Like, when you go onto a drop lottery and you wager your points to try and get a collectible, you need to remember, I mean, I think Dan said we had almost 60,000 people trying for Edo, and that was 2,000 additions, you're going to get a very small fraction of that percent being available for this drop lottery. So you're going to have, you know, 60,000 people possibly bidding their points for 10 or maybe even 20 collectibles. And we see people selling collectibles that are worth thousands and thousands of dollars panicking because they believe that the points are going to be the end all to be all in the app. And I, I just think for a moment, we just really need to take a step back and remember what it is that we're here for. And at the end of the day, the value proposition of the amount that our collectibles are going to be worth will always, in my opinion, far outweigh the value of the points that you will receive. But all the same, it's awesome that we have this program. I think it's also important to remember that, you know, you guys weren't obligated to make this program. You're a licensee of these licensors and you're providing this product. You're adding this level of gamification in to support the community because as collectors, it's something that you see as value. This doesn't exist in the real world. You know, if I buy a low mint collectible in the real world or I buy a, you know, a, a super rare collectible in the real world, no one gives me extra points or a pat on the back for it. Right. So <laughs> it, it's just, it's important to remember that perspective and, and not to downplay yes. anyone's concerns about the comics. This isn't what that's about, but it's just looking at the bigger picture and remembering, you know, we're fortunate to be in the position that we are right now and just kind of be, you know, try and be grateful for it. But of course, feedback is always welcome. And uh, I'm sure the team will, yeah. will, will listen to it. Uh, and I guess speaking on that feedback, and I don't know if, if Dan Reese or David can comment on it, but I've had a lot of people asking me already, because of course, Disney and an MCP article within 24 hours wasn't enough. Um, <laughs> do we have any Never. and i'm not talking time frames but updates in in regards to the priority list for what you guys see coming in the next you know weeks and months in relation to um utility for the token whether it be the omi utility article uh listings on exchanges post immutable we had an update on the mtl already uh maybe omi to nft do we have you know a priority list that we are looking at to try and, and, and get some of those accomplished for the community absolutely and yeah thanks for your for your kind words i think you summed it up very well um in the sense that the, the true value comes from the collectible rather than a an associated point system um however it, uh, that said um I, uh, I will of course go back and and look at the model and, and see what we can do to address the, um, the concerns from the community um now in terms of priority <clears throat> um let's see right now i've got one two ninety nine 150 <laughs> priority number one <laughs> Um, I can assure you that high up on that list is the OMI Utility Program, or the OUP. 
Um, and uh, I, I think I mentioned in a, a few earlier AMAs that I was hoping to drop that with the MCP article because <clears throat> I know that there is a huge part of the community that also, you know, wants to know what utility is coming with the OMI token. So uh, that is absolutely next on my list for next week, and I'm aiming to have that out to you next week. Please don't record that and send it back to me if it doesn't happen. Uh, <laughs> <happen>. <laughs> um, <clears throat> and just keep in mind that, you know, it, 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 this, like I've said, this is a collectibles business, and ultimately the very first thing we need to do is make sure we are getting out collectibles, make sure we are meeting our licensor obligations. So those, you know, the collectible drops always need to take priority. It doesn't make sense for us to not drop anything <clears throat> and spend a couple of weeks, you know, working on a, on a feature. So uh, in terms of major priorities, uh, obviously we've still got a few irons in the fire which have taken a bit longer than we had initially hoped, such as the immutable migration, um, gem to fiat, um, the OMI utility program, and obviously the MCP has, has now been dropped and that is already underway in development. Um, <clears throat> in terms of other features, really moving forward after the, uh, and I can, I can assure you, I have a list of so many cool features that I just wish we could roll out tomorrow. But mm -hmm. I'm, I'm actually going to take a little bit of a break from new features. And after the version two is rolled out, um, we're going to spend time focusing on MCP, OUP, um, you know me, how many other acronyms? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, OPP, Alex, you got a couple yeah. of <laughs> um, and, uh, and then we're also just going to go back and focus a little bit more on, on the app. You know, there, there, are, there are various sections within the app, like such as the, the, the comic section, which, uh, as I mentioned, should be rolled out next week, the upgrade to that. And there's just other parts of the app that need a little bit of attention. Um, so between now and the end of the year, um, it's really going to be looking to focus on, uh, on, on those major components, MCP, OUP, and, and then also just, just diving back into the app a little bit to make things uh, a little bit easier to use and address some of the points that the, that the community has brought up. Uh, and then, yeah, moving into 2022, um, you know, really the, the focus is going to heavily shift towards the, the VBverse. Uh, obviously, you know, that is something that we have um, underway right now. But we do, as I mentioned, have a lot of irons in the fire that we want to get out to the community. Um, and then after that, we'll be, yeah, we'll, we'll start to focus very heavily on the, on the VBverse. In addition to that, we've got to remember, we've also got the web platform coming out. <clears throat> um, so there is a lot going on uh, in, in the background. And there's a lot of other cool new features, um, like a new type of collectible that we have coming out um, should be sometime in January uh, that we will also be working on. Well, I think you definitely gave me a, a little bit to uh, to mull over, and I'm sure you'll see a video or two coming out about all of that. So <laughs> thank you so much, guys, for all that you do and for having me up, as always. Uh, it's a great community, and I just consider it an absolute honor and pleasure to be a part of it, and I'm very much looking forward to see uh, where all of this takes us moving into the new year. So thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you, thank you Foster. Really appreciate it. All right. Um, Dan, how are we looking? Uh, coming up on about... 12, seven minutes to 5 p.m. Pacific. I got a few more Twitter, um, Twitter questions I can roll out or I can bring some more people up on stage. How, how are we looking? Uh, yeah, I can probably do another 10 to 15 minutes. Um, and then after that, I really need to go and get the collectibles loaded up for tomorrow's drop. Uh, there you have it. <laughs> okay. All right. Let's do one from uh, Twitter here. Um, Let's see. Will you guys introduce a burning mechanism? Uh, sorry, this two pank is asking. Will you guys introduce a burning mechanism, like trading collectibles in for a better, uh, for a chance of better? Uh, uh, this is worded with sorry. Like trading in collectibles for a drop, essentially. Um, yes, I think we touched on that very lightly in the MCP Pro, and one of the, when the MCP Pro is rolled up, rolled out, <clears throat> one of the features in there. Uh, that we have listed is the ability to burn collectibles for points. Um, now, I, I haven't elaborated on that too much because we're still modeling out 
how we're going to do that burn and what the value of the points that you will receive. So uh, ultimately, to answer the question is that, yes, you will be able to burn collectibles and then and you will receive points for those uh, for the for the collectibles that you burn, which you can then obviously use in the drop lottery or, you know, maybe you just want to use it for premium market listings or accessories. Uh, but that but there will be a, a, a burning system like that to start off with. And, you know, there's a lot of value in in a burning model. So we might look to expand that in the future. All right. Uh, let's do one more here. Um, sorry, I'm just making sure we, I'm picking one that we haven't answered already. I think we pretty much touched on all of this. Um, yeah, okay. Let's go ahead and move on. To, oh, no, here, let's do this one. Uh, Boomla asks, is Ecomi still scheduled to be in more exchanges by the end of the calendar year 2021? Is it contingent on the move to IMX? It is, of course, contingent on the move to IMX. Um, obviously, there's no point signing up any new exchanges until that migration happens. Um, and, you know, legally, I don't want to get into any <clears throat> muddy water by by promising anything on that front. So post immutable well, we will release that information as um, as it comes to fruition. All right. Okay, let's move back to the stage here. We got just a couple more. Um, we're going to do, and I know usually I try to get some new voices up here, but I think there's uh, plenty of people that are kind of acting as proxy for the community um, that, you know, either do videos and things like that. So we're, we're really trying to get the word spread here about um, the intricacies of MCP. And I think the these voices will help us do that for anybody who couldn't join the AMA. Uh, that said, there will be the uh, customary um, recap on Twitter after this. But with that, let's move on to TAPS. What's up, TAPS? Hey, uh, congrats, Ecomi Vivi team, for securing arguably the biggest IP in NFT history to date. So I was so excited. I was you know, pacing around my house when I heard. So <laughs> congrats, everyone. <laughs> Thanks. Um, so th that's funny. My, my question actually was, you know, I think everything's been pretty covered on the VV side. My question was around, I guess, Omi on the mutable side. So Dan, you had said that um, the phase two is just about finished. There was a, a hiccup, but that's kind of being worked out. So once that, I guess, is, you know, finished, hopefully end of next week, we then enter into phase three, which is where we're migrating you know, our tokens over from GoChain to Immutable X. And I guess my question is around, you know, the exchanges have been put off for some time because it does make sense to go to Immutable. Would that, I guess, be in line with the time where we could see another exchange or two? Or will we need to wait for everyone to be fully migrated before announcing something like that? Uh Firstly, welcome, Taps. Uh, I, I love watching your videos as well. Always a great source of what's actually happening on the ground level of the community. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, I mean, I think I pretty much just answered that question around exchange announcements. <clears throat> um, however, the, 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 the last part of your question is that, no, we won't wait until everyone has migrated because, you know, ultimately the, the token swap site will be up almost indefinitely <clears throat> because there may be people who you know, have forgotten they brought some OMI last year at point zero 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 whatever it was. <laughs> uh, and then next year, <clears throat> six months from now, they might go, ah, hey, that's right, I've got a, I've got a bag of OMI. Um, so, yeah, we won't, the, the, the exchange listings are not contingent on everyone moving over. However, I will say that this next step that we're doing now is the, the reminting. <clears throat> it is a fairly complex process which is why we've you know taken so long to to get to this point and then the following phase after that <clears throat> is really the most crucial and um you know we are dealing with significant amounts of value and we need to approach it very carefully and very studiously to make sure that you know everything is going to run very smoothly so from my perspective um you know if things e end up taking an extra week or two um, I, I'm absolutely going to go for that for that time to make sure that the, the everything to do with the migration 
happen successfully because we can only we can only do this once. Um, you know, everyone wants it now, 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 but it has to be safe in order for us to you know to move ahead. So, um, you know, with that said, I think just you know a little bit of understanding. You know, everyone on the VV and Akomi side is literally working their butts off to get everything done. Um, but from my perspective, before I can really give the go ahead, I need to be hundred percent sure that. Uh, you know, every all the T's are crossed and the I's are dotted. Thank you. Thanks, Taps. Thank um, two last ones here. We'll kind of end it on a bang. Let, let's move forward with uh, oh, and a T Pirates. What's up? Oh, hey, been a while. What's up, everybody? Uh, you know, congratulations on all these uh, historical announcements, Dan, Alex, David, and Reese, and, and thanks for having me up and. Uh, you know, it's been such a dream come true watching all of these accomplishments and successes happen in such a short time. And, you know, my question is really, I have a lot of friends that uh, have joined the app and maybe bought a common DeLorean or something like that, but never dived into it to the level that I have. And so my question is, was there any predictive analysis on what the Master Collector Program could do on enhancing engagement, maybe user retainment and maybe onboarding of new users? Like I know we're encroaching on a million users, uh, but what kind of spark might this have for maximizing engagement for uh, people who might be less obsessed with this app? <laughs> <laughs> Wait, there, there are people out there who aren't obsessed with it? Dave, you need to pick it up. <laughs> um, so, I mean, ultimately, the Master Collector Program is designed to be a retention retention and loyalty program. That That really is the core of what it is. Um, and that is why, you know, you'll see things like, yeah, you know, daily activity points are are quite high comparatively. You know, you can earn up to twenty five points per day, and uh, you know, if you're a you know a master collector or a high level rank or a high level collector, um, you will be getting a significant amount of points per day for what you're holding. Um, so you're probably going to be less inclined to do the daily activity because it's not really going to move your needle that much in terms of what you're getting. However, if you're a new user into the app, you know, those 25 daily points could really go a long way to, uh, you know, to help you start to move up the levels and gain some more advantage. So ultimately that, you know, really that is what the whole emphasis behind the MCP is, retention and loyalty. Yeah, that's that's great to hear, Dan, because I think, you know, that's one of the biggest incentives that I had from when I joined the app is, you know, I was able to kind of build that leverage. And now seeing that from a point based system for new users is, I think, really remarkable. So so big kudos on that. Cool. Thank you. Um, yeah. And I think it's the, you know, when, when there are obviously going to be a lot of new users coming in who are, are going to be low level. Um, but ultimately, that's how it is. You know, I mean, you know, if I log into World of Warcraft today with my, you know, I think I had a level 20 something all those years ago, um, <clears throat> I, which was great back then. But now I'm almost going to be starting at the bottom. But, you know, in the same sort of vein, I'll, I could go back in and I could go, you know, go through the grind, killing all the small creatures and working my way up. And that's really the same kind of philosophy with the, with the MCP. Kill all the small creatures. That's, that's the philosophy. Yeah, you got it. <laughs> Fair. That's great, guys. Well, thanks thanks for having me up. I really appreciate it. All right. Thanks, man. Thank, Thank you. you. All right. Let's do one more from Twitter, and then we'll finish off with one on the stage, and then we'll call it a day. Uh, basically, pick this one on name alone because, uh, you know, I love me some tacos. Uh, Crispy Tacos asks, <laughs> Uh, have you guys thought about adding an invite code for users to gain rewards or points uh, when onboarding new users to keep from people abusing the system and can unlock points rewards after that user participates in a drop or buys a collectible? Absolutely. Uh, we will definitely be rolling out an invite system, uh, and that invite system will <clears throat> contribute towards your points. Uh, but you are correct. It will only contribute once various uh, uh, factors have been have been met. Otherwise, uh, you know, people could game or or scam the system in some way. But an invite friend, um, I think, is really is a no brainer. Where that sits in the current priority list, um, you know, it's not up at number one. <laughs> nice, awesome, thank you. Okay, uh, we're gonna wrap it up here because you know we got to crack the whip on Dan, get him back to uh, 
the drop machine. <laughs> like uh, but, you know, uh, this one's a selfish one for me just because I love his energy. Mr. Omi One Kenobi. <laughs> Hey, let's so. go. Hey, what up, everybody? <laughs> hey, Dan. Hey, Dan, I got a question about the MCP. No, I don't got no question about the MCP program, man. You already wrote it, man. Hey, hey thank, thank you for your transparency, man. Hey, I just want to say, first of all, thank you to the VV team because it's not about money for me, man. You guys brought a whole community together, man. And the people that I see or that I talk to every day in these crazy spaces, man, has been running for like 300 <laughs> hours now. We're all on crack, coffee, and everything, bro. Um, it's beautiful, man. And uh, I count them as my brothers and sisters. And uh, I can't wait to meet you at Decon. And the only reason why uh, Reverend Alex brought me up is because I told him I was going to buy him a bottle. So, hey. <laughs> oh, I can be I easily that. bribed. <laughs> There's some bribery going on. <laughs> and, uh, um, aside from everything, thank you again, you guys, for your transparency. At least we have what we have written. It's not in stone, but we have something to work with. And uh, I'm excited. Um, and this is for everybody uh, in the crowd, uh, including me. We would like the Necronomicon. We already voted on it. So if you could uh, <laughs> animate that, that'd be great. It'd make us a little bit more richer. We already know the, the value in it. And there's a cult out there. I'm just letting y'all know. I'm not saying no names, but Another hey, one? I'm, 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 I'm a high priest, okay? So, uh, <laughs> yeah, hey, but thank you guys so much, man. And uh, we say this all the time in spaces. Um, you can go to any corporate um, job, but you'll never speak to the boss. You'll never see the boss. You guys have uh, really reached out to us in so many ways, and, and it's awesome, for real. So thank you, guys. And I want to give a shout-out to everybody down there, man, that's been keeping it going as far as the spaces goes. And, Alex, thank you for uh, mm -hmm. for joining us every time, bro. Like, it's dope. Back to, back to the class on Thursdays with Emoji, Lenny, True. The list goes on khaki, proper. Okay. I mean, if I missed anybody, oh, my boy Nexus. My boy Nexus with the what ifs. Gamma Verse is coming out with a dope <laughs> soundtrack. Y'all got to wait for that, too. Doom, doom, do, doom, 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 doom. Hey, I'm telling you guys this right now, man. Hey, so, hey, the uh, OBL, uh, Rose, um, NFT Queen. All right. I, I, I can't stop, baby. I love the community. Let's go. Hey, let's speaking go. of which, OBL is going to be Ling, Let's go. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, know. guys. Hey, Dan. Hey, Dan. Thanks, can, hey, Dan, I just want to say hi. Hey, man. Green, I just want to say hi. And by, and they said hi to that. me, y'all. Hey, it is what it is. Best day ever. Let's go. Biscuit, what's up? Thanks, brother. All and right. Me On that, that note, call. Uh, thank you very yeah. much, um, everybody. Appreciate your time today. And, you know, obviously we have uh, still a lot uh, a lot of ways to go uh, in getting everything out. Uh, as we mentioned, with this is a first draft. We're really excited to have the feedback. We really appreciate it. Um, and, you know, there's more exciting news to come. So do not, uh, you know, do not tune away from the Twitter space. Uh, and you know, speaking of Twitter space, I think OBL is going to host one after this just for the community to guys, so you guys can marinate on this whole uh, two two hour uh, jubilee, if you will. <laughs>